You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bro Down Podcast. I'm Andy Schmidt. And I'm Tim Fulton. This is what do you got. What do you got? What do you got? We're bringing a random topic to the table, and we just bullshit about it for a little bit. Tim, what do you got? I miss beer. Of course you do. It's been a whole day. Day. Day and a half. Thank okay. you very much. So you know when you Sorry. tell yourself, you, all right, for the audience out there, I'm doing 30 days of complete sobriety. Uh, I need to get myself a little bit back in shape. I've been getting a little too out of control lately. Not horrifically, but a little bit too much. Lockdown out of control. Yeah, a lockdown out of control. So I need to rein it in a little bit. And you know when you tell yourself you can't have something? and then You want it. All you can. Last night, I was just sitting there like, now what do I do? I, I had to stay busy just to keep my mind off things. Yeah, I had the recent thing where uh, there's a better way to look at it, I think. Instead of saying you can't have it, just say, I won't have that. I see where you're coming from, but it's just not the way my brain works. It, it's not. I can't trick my... alcoholism, Tim. I'm Acute glad you... Alcoholism. The first step is live right now. Um, what do you miss most about it? I just miss... I don't know. I don't know. Which is which is a point. Yeah. I don't really miss anything about it. I mean, beer tastes good, but moderately. There are you can other get things. Non-alcoholic that, beer, but I feel like that's just adding to the problem. Yeah. And there's other things that taste better. Yeah. So what do you? I like. I miss the feeling. Does oh, it relax you? Do you drink it to calm down? Do you drink it to get energy? Do you drink it to like play video games? Like, what do you? What is the purpose that you drink it for most of the time? Boredom. To, to me. Beer has always been, or alcohol in general, has always been something, and not for everything. Don't get out of control here, peeps. Mm. But to amplify an experience, right? So if you go bowling, you can have an amazing time bowling. If you go bowling and have a couple of beers, it might be ever so slightly better. I'm not saying it'll, it'll be the best night you ever had, but it amplifies an experience. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. It just so you have a hard time letting loose. I've always been a shy guy. That's I th- that's what I'm hearing is that when you're doing something, it allows you to kind of be like more like who the fuck cares? Let's just have fun instead of like maybe being like a little bit not uptight but like like taken back. Not taken back. What's the fucking word? Like when you're not really like reserved. Reserved. Yes. Reserved. Perfect word. Um, and the beer allows or the alcohol allows you to just be like more yourself yeah. that you would be whenever. I mean, everybody does that to a certain extent. It's like oh, yeah. trying to like, like uh, what do they call it? Uh, beer courage or, or uh, liquid courage, liquid courage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone has that. Yeah. 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 I didn't mean for this to turn into like a self. Uh, uh, no, it's a call it session. I just meant this to be a lighthearted little on this beer. <laughs> no, it's a weird thing, though, because like uh, when you hear somebody else say things, it makes more sense to you. Yeah. So like I I'm like trying to like connect dots in like a like a you know You're trying I mean? to make it make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I see um, what you're saying. I definitely know what that's like where like you wanna experience something, but then again, there's also that weird thing where if you go too much, like it takes away from the experience. Yeah. There's a lot of times I wish I didn't drink because I it's like it would have been crystal clear what the memory was where I'm not saying you have like big blackout moments, but there are the, those times where you're like, I don't remember that. <laughs> but if you were sober, you would have remembered it. Yeah. 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 See, I'm, I'm like a seesaw when it comes to like how I take things. Cause there are times that I'll be like, you know what? Let's take 30 days off, like relax, like calm your body down, like get into a little bit better shape, blah, 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 blah. All, all these other things that are definitely good. And then like my seesaw will tilt the other way. And I'll be like, why are you holding yourself back from enjoying life? Just because you, you want to lose a couple pounds? Like, enjoy yourself, man. You're, you, yeah, you're an extremist. I am. I I'm, am. I, kn- I know what that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The balance is the hardest part, right? It is. It I'm is. I'm very envious sometimes of people who can, um, who can do things moderately, not just alcohol, but just anything yeah. moderately, and it's they don't think about it. They just do it moderately. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm always have to be like, I'm either going one way this way a thousand miles an hour, or going the other way a thousand miles an hour. Um, and in the middle, it just feels weird because it feels like there's not enough there. It's like there's not enough to, like, grab onto. There's no direction to steer this race car. I'm doing the thing that you did earlier. You know what probably is? 
it's not that those people have an easier time doing things moderately. They're doing things moderately that you do in an extreme way. Yeah. So they probably have extremes that you do in a moderate way. Like like cleaning. Um, that's just a purely random example. But some people just either fucking are disgusting or they have to sit down and clean up every goddamn inch of their house in a given weekend. Yeah. And, like, they don't have that balance of, like, you know what? I can vacuum tonight. I can, like, pick up my clothes tomorrow. And, like, that moderate. So, like, you're probably seeing them do moderate things that you do extreme things. Yeah, but there is I, – I agree with you there. But there is also that, like, saying how you do one thing is how you do all things. You ever hear that phrase before? No. So – I, I say that to myself a lot in my head because, and I say it when I get lazy, right? Because there, there is a, it's how you do one thing is how you do all things, right? So if you get up every morning and you make your bed or something like that, we've talked about before, yeah. you're, you're starting the day, you're doing one thing right. You're doing it the right way, which is going to translate to everything else you do. But if you're lazy with, uh, you know, making the bed or whatever, that trickles into the, so it's like how you do one thing, doesn't matter what it is. It's kind of how you do everything. And People that are moderate, it, it works for that too, right? Like, yeah. so if you moderately keep your house clean the way like a normal person would, you might be able to deduce that like they're like that in a lot of other ways too. But if you're like the kind of person who you wait till your house looks like a pigsty and then you just full on like, you know, vac suit, suit like just yeah. it becomes spotless. That's like one extreme and the other. There's no balance. It's it, the seesaw is on one side or the other side. It's never even. You're sitting by yourself. You got to run to the other side and jump and fucking rip it down just to get it to go back the other way. Um, and there definitely is a a positive to that if you if you aim it properly. Yeah. But yeah. you have to be aware. Yeah, the the self aware thing is the important part of that. Yeah. I think. I'm lucky like you were like I never did like drug like hardcore drugs Dude, and shit like it. that forget and i've it. never not not i can't even say it's really like 100 percent by choice i've never really liked alcohol mm -hmm. like i don't do well on it i don't feel good after i drink it even if it's like a left a little bit it is what it is but it just messes my stomach up but i am definitely like one of those people who i gotta i get obsessed with something i like i'm either totally disinterested or i'm obsessed with it um that's why I'm interested to see like what the reasoning is. Like if you could think about why you do something. My brother's the same way. Either mm. just just doesn't care about something, or like he has to be a hundred percent in it. He, like when we introduced him to D and D, the next day he like ordered figures online. He ordered his dice. He yeah. ordered all this cool shit, and he was going to be D and D guy. Yeah. Like, see, I I used to do shit like that. Yeah. And I got it like I know that I have an issue with stuff like that. So I try to be like calm myself down and be like, stop it. What are you doing? Like you're being ridiculous. Shut not all the time, trust me. But like it's a, it's an issue. Like I try to kind of want to float more in the middle, but yeah. then again I talk myself into it because I'm like, well, there's fucking two hours of daylight left. That's a lot of daylight. Sunny day, it's a good day. It might not be not might not be sunny tomorrow. You know, you can get shit done today. And then it's like raining and I'm out there in the rain. Like, you know, it could be too hot tomorrow to do it. Like a fucking good day to work because it's raining. It's cool. Like, just talk yourself into doing shit. Yeah, you're just a broken individual. I know. I'm fucking smashed. All right. I miss beer. That was the moral of that story. Beer. Andy, what do you got? Shopping cart theory. What is shopping cart theory? Andy? Okay. So this kind of plays into the other thing a little bit. Our previous week's podcast okay. on, on this. So shopping cart theory. Is something I, I read this a while ago and I meant to make it a thing back then, but I couldn't find it. So there's a theory called the shopping cart theory. It's brilliant. Okay. It's a brilliant like layperson, some dude wrote this, but it just he hit it on the head, right? And Lay it it's on me. basically um, the ultimate litmus test for whether people can self govern themselves. Ooh, okay. And it has to do with shopping carts. So I'm just going to read you what it is. The, shop, the shopping cart theory is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task, one of which all recognize as the correct, appropriate thing to do. To return the shopping cart is objectively right. There is no situation other than dire emergencies in which a person is not able to return their cart. 
Simultaneously, it is not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. Therefore, the shopping cart presents itself as the apex example of whether a person will do the right thing without being forced to do it. No one will punish you for not returning the shopping cart. No one will fine you or kill you for not return, returning the shopping cart. You gain nothing by returning the shopping cart. You must return the shopping cart out of the goodness of your own heart. You must return the shopping cart because it, is, because it is the right thing to do, because it is correct. A person who is unable to do this is no better than an animal, an absolute savage who can only be made to do what is right by threatening them with law and force that stands behind it. The shopping cart is what determines whether a person is a good or bad member of society. Whoa. It's kind of self-serving that I like that piece because I'll say there's an 85% chance, closer to 95% chance, that I always walk the cart back to the, to the thing. So don't let me break my arm pat myself on the back there. So real quick, it's a brilliant fucking piece. It that that's that is pretty good. I don't think it's one for one on, but I do think it's pretty accurate. Why? I'm interested in this topic, so because I don't think the seriousness of the shopping cart plays into the seriousness of most everyday activities. That's the point, though. That's what makes that. That's what makes that. What it is is because it's it's a thing that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't mean anything. No one gets hurt from it. No one does anything. But you know it's the right thing to do to bring the shopping cart back. It might just inconvenience somebody from having to go walk and get it or they can't take that spot. But you know that when you don't put it back, you're kind of being a little shit. And you know that when you do put it back, you're, being a, you're doing the right thing. That's true. And that's what makes it, because it's not this mountainous thing. And that's the point. If it was a mountainous thing, you couldn't make it, because not everyone could do it. Not everyone had the time to uh, do I'm it. Not, I wasn't saying uh, seriousness as in difficulty. I'm saying seriousness as in uh, effect on society. Yeah, it does play negative effect on society. But it's it not does. The same, it's not the same as every other thing. But, if, but that's what I mean, though. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm standing hard behind this. And we're just going to have a little debate. If you can't just put a shopping cart back, I'm, by the way, I'm like 95 percent on your side. I know, I know. I just, I just find it funny. Uh, if you can't put a shopping cart back, what happens when something serious comes up? It's like those people who get a dog, but they can't even take it outside to walk. What happens if you have to watch your brother's kids? Maybe you rise to the occasion. Maybe. How many people rise to the occasion? Well, I will say that that is an interesting point, and I was having a discussion with somebody the other day about this because. I have seen I no names obviously and I'm I've seen two groups of people okay who had very similar very similar circumstances growing up and were in very very similar situation in their late adolescence 18 19 years old okay they alcohol drug problems running with the bad crowd blah 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 all that nonsense yeah and they, these were at different times so it wasn't even like I had a one for one parallel like it was hap playing differently on different stages yes didn't know each other either so like i kind of had to put the pieces together like i thought back i was like oh that person did it differently uh both got pregnant one became a devout mother devout like like her life was no longer about her she understood i'm here to protect my children i'm here to take care for my children i'm gonna do everything in my power to take care of my children and give yeah. them the best life that I could possibly give them. The other person got pregnant and wakes up at noon, does drugs with the kid present. Like the there's whole always sh exceptions to the rule. <laughs> if you give if you give a hundred million people Mike Tyson's early childhood, how many of them become world champion at twenty years old? Probably one. Probably one. There's always an exception to the rule. There is an exception, but I'm not saying I'm seeing the exception. No. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not, but I'm, I'm not saying this is right, a hundred percent of the time. What I'm saying is that that is a brilliant way. Oh yeah, it's a great analogy. It's a brilliant way to deduce simple things that might seem not important, but that's what basically builds a society, right? 
like little things that you do out of respect for your community and out of respect for your fellow man and woman. And that is part of an issue is that if you can't, if you know that, Hey, not returning the shopping cart doesn't do anything to me. And someone says, but what if somebody else needs, wants to pull in that spot? Now they're inconvenienced. And your thought is I'm not them. That's a problem society wise, because I agree. What happens when it's a bigger issue? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's becomes, well, I'm not the one that's going to go hungry. Why should I care about them or whatever? So it's almost like put your shopping cart away. Okay. Put it, put it away. Right. It's, put, it, I just away. thought that whoever wrote that nailed it. No, no, I, I, I agree. It is a great analogy. I still say it's not one for one, but I am going to tell you a funny story. Okay. I was at Tractor Joe's. Tractor Supply? Tractor Supply. Tractor Joe? That's like a trade. I'm thinking trade. I'm thinking Trader Joe's. I was at Tractor Supply, bought stuff, had a shopping cart. Put Tractor it, Jacks. Put it back. They didn't have like a return cart thing, mm. but it wasn't a big parking lot. So I put it back on the sidewalk. I, it wasn't like in with the carts, but it was like near them. You made it. You made a. You made it an, an attaboy attempt. Yes. So and then I went back to my car, and as I was opening the door, I turned around, and it must have had a loose wheel, and it was actively going into. I don't, I want to say the road, but it's not the road. Careening. It was, it was careening in front of the building where cars would drive through, but it wasn't like an active driving area. And I looked at it, and I was just like, and I left. Yeah. See, I can't. I can't blame you. I, I gave an effort. You I did. did my best. If you're explaining, you're losing. Hmm. If you're explaining, you're losing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's an old uh, political term, I think. Hmm. Um. Yeah. No. I. I see what you're saying. I, I'll park next to the shopping cart return because I know I want to put it away. See, what does that say? It means that I'm planning ahead. It does mean you're planning ahead. Yeah. And I will park purposely further away so I can do that. Passing many open spots because I'm not lazy. I'm not one of those people who want to park close. This is going to be a real random tangent. It bothers me when people park close. Dude. Dude, what the fuck? You can't. I know people that will spend 15 minutes looking for a spot. They will spend all this time looking for a close spot, doing as least we're getting on. Getting beside themselves, beside themselves, that they can't find a close spot. And, like, there's hundreds of spots back there. We could have been in the store now. We could have been out of the store. Yeah. No, don't do that. bothers me. I worked with a guy. We were drove to the fucking – we were going to a Walmart on a lunch break. (laughs) He was driving around, and I'm like, "Cause Walmart, I'm, I don't live near." And he's driving around, and I'm like, "Go up, down, up, down." I'm like, "Dude, what are you doing?" He's like, "Trying to find a spot, bro." I'm like, "You just passed a bunch of spots." He's like, "It's too far away." I'm like, "There was a spot. You just passed one that was six spaces from the front." He's like, "I don't want to walk. I don't like walking." I'm like, "I, for I swear to you, I will park every time you're in the car and I'm driving. I will park in the furthest fucking spot." I, the next time, I'm like, I'll drive. He forgot. I parked in the last spot. It was an empty parking lot. I parked in the last spot. I'm like, hey, bro, it's up to you if you want to eat. Fucking made his ass walk. Because it's those same people that will complain, like, I don't know how I'm so big. Not only that, he don't put the shopping cart away. He's a great human being. I love him. But he don't put the fucking shopping cart away. Just because I like somebody doesn't mean they can self-govern. <laughs> okay? Just saying. Here. On to the next. Here. That's it. That's it. That, those are our topics. Let us know what you think about the shopping cart theory. And the, uh, I have a story. Go ahead. Is this... Did you go? Yeah. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> I have a story. Funny fucking story. I, I, I remembered it. it. Happened... My physical therapist. She's got a, a child. I forget the age of the child. But she's old enough to talk. But not old enough to be, like, left alone. We'll say, like, four. So, like, four. Yeah. I don't know what those ages are. So... Her kid has, a, and granted, this lady is like the nicest person in the world, like nicest human being. So, which is why I find it funny when she gets mad. So she's got a dog and she's got a kid. So she had to run out to the car for like 20 seconds and her 
daughter was like, oh, I want to go out with you. I don't want to be alone, this and that. But her dog is a spaz. So she's like, I really, it's like, it's like 10 at night. She's like, I really don't want to do anything. Like, just please stay here. Please. Like, just exhausted as a mom. So she walks out to the car and she leaves her at the door so she can watch her. She's out there for 20 seconds. She comes back in. Dog is just ripping around the house and the daughter's crying. And she's like, what happened? And she's like, fucking, you know, ping pong ate my toy. You know, he ate my little toy. It's like this little piece of plastic toy that she like loved. And he's, and she's like, what, like, what is the problem? Like what? She's like, he ate it. He ate it. And like the dog rips everything up. So she's like, oh my God. So she looks at the dog and she's like, if you eat another toy, she's like, you're going to find a new home. So she was that mad. And she's like the nicest person. She don't say shit like that. So she's like, mommy, will you sleep with me tonight? Like I'm really, she goes to bed. She goes, I wake up thinking she's going to be calmed down she was first things out of her mouth is I'm really upset that my toy's gone so she's like <sighs> okay she's like because mommy loves you so much this was going to happen the dog's going to poop it out i'll go through the poop and i'll find your toy okay like i'm gonna do this for you tell me she just bought another one because this is how much she doesn't want the kid to be upset like she's there so it brings a dog out. Dog takes a shit. So she takes two sticks. She does it? She takes two sticks. And she's like rooting through this dog shit. What Wait. are you on? She's rooting through this what dog What is the shit. point of this story? It's just a funny story. Dude, I was, I was, very few things make me double over. I was hunched over the, the therapy table. And she's digging through this dog shit with two sticks. Like, to the point where I'm just picturing like this little campground site of like it's like there's no possible other stone to turn over in that pile of shit. She's like comes back in. She's like, I guess we're gonna have to wait till later because it didn't come out. I'm, so I'm thinking like it's gonna be like six years. She's in, every day just digging. So she goes and brings the dog outside a second time, digging through the shit a second time, looking for this toy. She goes back in there, you know, two. Day, two shits worth of like digging through with sticks. She comes back in the house and she's like, fuck, I got to clean this place up. She goes over, she moves the couch. Hey, daughter, come here. What is that? My toy. Dog never ate it. Dog never ate the toy. She's like, I guess she didn't eat it. So she rooted through the dog shit for two bowel movements. Looking for a toy that the dog never ate. The dog didn't look at her for two days for how bad she yelled at it. This is one of the nicest people. And now, every time the dog does something or like tries to nibble one of the kid's toys, the kid will turn around and be like, if you bite my toy again, you're going to find a new home. Oh. So now every time she brings her somewhere, that's what she says to the dog. So that's what they think this nice person says uh, like it's almost like one of those people that's so nice and then you hear him snap on a bad day and you're like that's what she's like behind closed doors uh, i get it psycho yeah i couldn't stop laughing dude i thought this was gonna play back into like no it was part. it was literally just a fun a fun <laughs> story i found funny just a shit story guys find shit funny so there we go i promise to cut him off in the future <laughs> yeah just cut me off but he goes, I have a funny story. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> see you guys next time. <laughs> the fuck was that? All right, guys. Let us know what you... I don't need... Go to brodownpro.com. Bye, everybody. <laughs> You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all...